I was one of 10 Republicans in the House uh, to vote for impeachment. And I think we've seen the same and a lot of rhetoric from um, officials of my party who you know, were openly condemning you know, in the days that followed uh, and then kind of backpedaled so hard the mm-hmm. chain fell off the bicycle and uh, or chain fell off the sprocket and was dragging on the ground. So, you know, I'm I don't I think when when we slip into political violence, that is a line that um, cannot be tolerated, that cannot be excused, that cannot be um, you know, treated with kid gloves. I'm the last Democrat in Congress right now who represents a district that went for Romney, Trump and Trump. Um, and um, so we're a smaller group. But, you know, when I was making decisions when Trump's first impeachment happened, um, you know, you have to get comfortable with the fact that you may not be reelected and that some things are more important than you keeping a job. These are two Congress members who have taken risks um, and on the same issue, on that issue of impeachment. Um, Alyssa Slotkin, the first impeachment, uh, her district, she was under a lot of pressure not to support the impeachment. Peter Meyer, a new congressman, hasn't even had a chance to establish himself and his, you know, and his um, status in his district right off, took a couple of really hard votes. Uh, one to certify the election, and one to impeach. This is rare in politics today. And why is it so hard well, for politicians? One is uh, the party system itself. I mean, a- as new members of Congress, you go to Washington and and you want to you want to rise through the ranks. Well, that system of rewards rewards loyalty first uh, more than anything else. The other big reason that uh, that members of Congress, I think, end up doing this uh, is the way that districts have been drawn for so long. They have been drawn to ideological uh, exclusionary extremes as a means of holding power for whatever party gets to draw the map. Uh, And what people fear more than anything else uh, when they have a seat in Congress is not that the other party might challenge them and take that seat from them, uh, but that they would get a challenge from within their own party, from either the far right or the far left. I think we see something different with Slotkin and Meyer because their districts look really different than most members yeah. uh, of Congress. Slotkin's district is is largely Republican. Uh, she was able to win uh, uh, two cycles ago uh, because she appealed to the middle. It's a it's a district that has a growing number of Democrats, so she was able to put together a coalition of both parties. Uh, Meyer's district is Republican, but it's nowhere near as Republican as most districts uh, in the state. And it's not as extreme as some of the the others. I think we will see more districts that look like these two do now uh, when they draw the maps this year for for 2022 and going into this decade, or, or at least that is the hope, is that most of the districts, as many as possible, can can be bipartisan, can be places where a Republican or a Democrat has just about the same chance uh, of winning the seat. Um, Slotkin's in a pretty conservative district and has managed managed to survive um, a difficult election and threats of a challenge. Meyer has already been censured for his votes by his local Republican um, Republican Party. Uh, he's bound to face a, par- a primary. He's already been promised a prior priority. And I've, you know, I go, you know, I think about this issue of representation. And in some sense, you know, I wonder how obliged are you to represent the will of your district and how much uh, individual uh, conscience you can apply. I mean, that's always, I think, a thin line. Uh, You know, Slotkin is one of seven Democratic congressman elected from a Trump district. I mean, what's her responsibility to those people who are perhaps far more conservative than the other districts represented by Democrats in Congress? And same with with Meyer. I mean, how how far can you deviate from what your your people want? The idea of longevity in Congress is uh, the idea that over time you build a relationship with those yeah. constituents that allows you to take risk that allows you to say, I actually don't agree with you on this. I think you're wrong. I'm gonna do what I believe is right. And if you wanna punish me for it, uh, go ahead. Right now, so many of the districts are drawn in a way that that people are just scared uh, to do anything other than 
the, the, the quote unquote norm because they'd get an intra-party challenge uh, in, in the next election. I'm also um, very interested in this problem solvers caucus that yeah. both Slotkin and, and Meyer uh, belong to, this group that has committed in principle to support bipartisan governing. Now, it's still a limited number of members of Congress, uh, but I, I hope they can gain sway. I mean, they've committed themselves to supporting only bipartisan legislation. Now, they haven't been tested much about this, but I think this uh, budget bill, this COVID-19 relief bill would test that. How much uh, optimism do you have that, we, that this caucus can grow and actually commit to pragmatic governing? You, you do have people on, on either extreme who are saying, look, it's, it's go time, it's battle time, and we're just not going to deal with uh, the other side. But I think there are a lot of people who are really tired of that. And I think what we saw on January 6th uh, inspired a lot more people to say, this has gotten ridiculous. Uh, I mean, we can't, we can't govern uh, together. Uh, if, if one side is uh, literally attacking the Capitol, trying to overturn the, the, the process of government, I think there is a really strong will right now among the American people to see more working together. Now, of course, the pragmatic end of that means that people have got to give up something, right? You're not going to get everything uh, yeah. that you want on, on every issue. If we could get leaders elected out of these caucuses that are committed to working together, I think then you start seeing real change uh, in, in Congress and in the type of uh, policymaking we see uh, at both the national and state level.